Welcome to Concrete Conversations, the Indian real estate podcast. I'm Yash and I'm Akshay and we're the hosts of the show. The co-working and flexible workspace market in India has been through many ups and downs with their explosive introduction and growth spearheaded by international firms followed by a period of peril and reorganization post covid and the changes to the nature of work that came with it today flexible workspaces are seeing a revival in india with hybrid and distributed workspaces looking like a trend that's here to stay driving a new wave of growth in this sector and changing the way in which tenants and developers look at commercial real estate to talk about this resurgence in the flexible workspace market we have with us today mr amit ramani ceo of office amit is an architect by education with a masters in real estate and workspace strategy from cornell university he worked with the design and build firm nelson global and even set up their india operations amit founded office spelled a w f i s in 2015 as one of india's first co-working operators and today office operates over 150 locations with 90000 seats across 17 cities and is one of the largest operators in this sector in today's conversation amit talks to us about the state of co-working the growing trend of managed office spaces the quest to become a full stack workspace solutions provider and the future prospects of this sector in india Amit, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on Concrete Conversations. Um, how is your day going? I know it's a Saturday morning, so thanks for joining us on the, on the weekend as well. It's going well, Akshay. Thank you for doing this with me. You know, Amit, when we start off each of our episodes, we like to set a little bit of the context for our listeners. But before we talk about, uh, you know, the subject that that we typically cover in in a given episode, we like to get a sense of our guest's background as well. So could you give us a brief overview of uh, you know your your career and and how you reached where you are today Sure So um, Akshay uh, grew up in uh, Delhi uh, went to school of fine architecture for a bachelor's in architecture then went to Kansas State for a master's in architecture and environment behavior um then went on to do another master's at Cornell in real estate and planning and um, you know clearly at that stage the focus was to get into not hardcore design or architecture but go into a peripheral uh, areas where one could contribute more at a macro level so started my career with a company called HOK in New York City uh, advising companies on how to develop their real estate strategies so that they can optimize their real estate and obviously give the employee the best experience and at that stage uh, early stage 2001 911 hit and when 911 hit obviously similar kind of you know scenarios that we saw in covid started happening where people said we need distributed work uh, at that point work from home was called telecommuting so i got uh, very well entrenched into some of the top fortune 100 companies to advise them on how to develop these kind of strategies so um then um, went on to you know work for joined a company called uh, nelson which was a small mom and pop shop uh, we kind of together uh with the ceo and the founder grew it to about 600 people um and then obviously the economic conditions did start changing a bit in 2007 and 8 so decided to come back to india uh set up that business called nelson uh in india and then in 2010 i bought over that business and i right for a few other countries and became, basically became a first generation entrepreneur uh that business still continues to run i think is one of the top 5 design and build firms in the country today but i don't run that business um then office happened in 2015 um you know as i said earlier you know i had seen one version of this uh, kind of what we would call as uh, distributed work or satellite officing or giving opportunities to people to work near home and i saw this whole idea of co-working taken on in the us in a very meaningful way and you know i thought it would be something that would be extremely uh, interesting in india to explore and so i wrote a paper business plan on one of my flights back from the us and essentially went <laughs> essentially went and pitched the idea and raised the first uh, whatever 3 million dollars at that stage uh, uh, on a on a paper business plan 
um and then yeah obviously then the rest of it is you know have been a interesting journey since then um we have raised a significant amount of capital in office which is our co-working business today we operate about 150 locations 90000 seats across 17 cities and in the network we are the largest in india uh maybe four or five times the nearest competitor and uh, you know extremely focused on the customer side of things so we have close to about 2200 companies that work with us 60 70000 people that in any given day come into our center so i think it's been a extremely good journey but it's been a journey based on learnings from my past as i said 2001 i was doing similar and we again did something similar in 2020 when covid hit with work near home distributed work hybrid etc right that's fantastic right and um, you know now that we've kind of established the baseline here i i wanted to ask you amit um you've seen you know given the time at which you started office we've seen the kind of evolution of the co-working and maybe you know flexible workspace uh, if we want to be more inclusive market in india so uh, with that in mind i wanted to ask you over all these years uh, what changes have you seen and currently today post covid and the recovery what is the state of the flexible workspace market in india so yash when we started um, you know clearly this was a nascent industry right. um, there were a couple of global guys which were fairly well spread out across the world but clearly in india this was a kind of a sunrise sector right and between 2015 and i would say you know till about march 20 when covid hit um the sector saw some decent amount of growth even at that stage there were you know 250 300 operators that were there because the barrier to entry was fairly low but from the client side this was primarily seen as a solution for startups and maybe smes and maybe mid corporates right people who required any between let's say one seat to about 200 odd seats so that was the primary market um, pre covid and as a result the opportunity because the large occupiers kind of you know take up large chunks of space and they are you know out of probably the 35 40 million that on a typical year uh, is taken up in commercial real estate they probably take on about 50 60% and they were missing from you know being uh, adopters of uh, co-working right so um, post covid i think two three things changed right uh, one corporation started focusing on their primary business uh, wanted to not invest capex in areas which would not benefit their business so they wanted a capex to opex model second uh, flexibility right uncertainty brings flexibility to the core real estate is not a very flexible sy- system if you are doing your own conventional office right, right? <laughs> so from that standpoint flexibility came into the forefront and then third was speed right now companies were structured to set up one or two or three locations of 500 to 1000 seats but they are not structured to set up 10 locations in a city of 50 seats each so speed became very important and uh, as a result i think the occupiers uh, the base kind of changed with enterprises coming in a big way or large corporations coming or mnc's coming in a big way into this so that started increasing the demand for co-working and so fast forward to obviously 2020 early days of 21 were uncertain for everybody uh, we saw huge amount of impact to our business uh, with our clients leaving us because you know most people tried giving up space and we are a bit of a flex uh, operator right and that clearly gives people the flexibility and they took that flexibility right so um from that standpoint uh, you know we saw a huge impact negative impact to the business but then you know interestingly after the second wave things started turning around dramatically right this was post right. june 21 and companies started realizing that they had to find the new normal and for some companies the new normal was a hybrid model for some companies it was bring everybody back for some companies it was you know you can continue to work from home but clearly people started to have to make a decision right till that point they were sat- sitting on the sideline and when they started making decision the large occupiers started taking on large spaces and as, as a result just the flex co-working uh, was a established market managed offices kind of started coming to the forefront and when that started happening the demand suddenly grew dramatically so if you look at today almost uh, you know 
uh, 20% of all space take up in 2022, right? The new space take up was by flex operators and it was backed by demand. And that's the reason that they went into it. Was almost in 2022 itself, out of the 30 uh, some odd million square feet that got absorbed, almost about seven, eight million was taken up by flex operators, right? So suddenly wow. we became a big uh, part of the, uh, the, the market. Now, right. Today, what, what is happening is that the flex market, which was about 20 million square feet or 25 million square feet in March of 2020, um, today almost is somewhere around 55 to 60 million. And the wow. projection is that this will cross almost 75, 80 million in the next couple of years. So suddenly you become about a, from a 2% of the total market, you become almost 8, 9% of the total uh, commercial real estate market. So I think that is one dramatic change. The second thing that has changed is that in any uh, survey that has been done by our, um, you know, international property consultant partners, almost 75 to 80 percent of the people want flex to be part of their strategy even if it's taking a small percentage to whatever could be a complete 100 percent being in flex uh, clearly that's become mainstream so supply right. acquisition has gone in a different direction and demand is clearly you know leapfrog so i think the horizon looks fairly uh, I mean, bright and, you know, I think uh, obviously I'm biased because I am sit in the industry, but I think at least for the next couple of years, um, the, uh, you know, clearly we will see a lot of traction in, um, you know, in this flex co-working managed space. I think that that's great to know and it's, it's it's great to have something in this space to look forward to in that sense. And there is a bit of a follow-up here that, that came to mind while, while hearing you talk about the importance of flexibility. And you said that when you had, um, uh, when, when COVID struck, obviously, and there was uncertainty, you were flexible model, so your consumers opted for the flexibility. But from a, a consumer feedback standpoint, obviously, flexibility is now the need of the hour. But do you feel that um, the the flexible model caters to maybe a lo more loyal customer base. What are some of the more qualitative impacts uh, or, or feedbacks that you get from being more flexible in comparison to other players out there? So, um, actually, from our standpoint, we were very clear that we, as a business, will cater to somebody who requires one seat to somebody who requires a thousand seats. And as a result, we swim between uh, what we would call as a B2B customer and a B2C customer. Now, and we define it as less than 100 seats being B2C and more than 100 seats, seats being B2B. What we are, you know, fairly um, confident of and uh, feel that this is how the industry will evolve is we look at it like quick service real estate, right? So somebody who requires, let's say, you know, 10 seats, he wants it immediately. He's not going to wait for it for uh, a couple of months. But if somebody is looking for, let's say, 500 seats, he's also not expecting it to get it on a just-in-time basis, right? Yes. <laughs> so there is that clear spectrum of uh, somebody requiring s smaller cohorts and somebody requiring larger cohorts. We want to cater to both. And as a result, we are giving flexibility along that stream, right? So if you were taking one seat from me, I don't want anything other than, you know, a one month kind of a rental from you. Right. But if you are looking for, let's say, 500 seats, I will come in and ask you for security deposit. I will ask you for some sort of a lock-in, et cetera, et cetera, because I'm committing capital and I'm committing to taking on a bit of that risk, right? So right. But flexibility means different things for different people. But we want to be offering that flexibility to the customer as and when they require it, right? So I think that's, uh, you know, from our standpoint, that's how we define uh, flexibility. Second, um, there is the customer base is shifting, right? So somebody wants to put their headquarters with us. Somebody wants only 20 seats with us in a location. Somebody wants 20 seats across my, you know, 10 different centers, right? So I think I want to be, at least when I say office wants to be, clearly that provider that can cater to every commercial real estate demand that is out there. Be it for a one seat, for 500 seats, be it for a meeting room for an hour, seat day for an hour, be it for a virtual office. We have expanded obviously our platform during COVID and we now offer what we call as design and build solutions, right? So you want your own conventional office, you pay for the lease, I will come and fit it out and deliver a great experience for you. We have developed office care, which is our facility management business. And from that standpoint, 
we are 2500 people that cater not just to our own centers but to third party customers so you want me to maintain your office only i will come and do it so we want to be that one stop shop from flexibility to servicing the demand of any commercial real estate requirement that comes out there that makes sense right perfect and you know now that we um understand the the current consumer perspective a bit more before we delve into you know the the full stack solutions aspect of it which is incredibly interesting i wanted to get your opinion on the supply side here so obviously uh, given the growth we've seen do you think that the perception of co-working has changed in the mind of property owners and also is there a, a more defined preference now in terms of vanilla rent or you know maybe a profit share or revenue share model so um yes from our standpoint we always saw this as a supply side story right we saw the market and almost about 70% of the market was what i would call is a bit distributed right it's or uh, you know for lack of a better word it's not institutionalized um only about 300 million is institutionalized with the big you know developers and so on 70 mil- 700 million square feet is with hnis wealth managers small mid time developers and we saw that as an opportunity because the larger platforms um the, our ipc partners international property consultant partners obviously focus on that 300 million square feet because that's where majority of the mnc demand goes but we saw the 700 million square feet as the opportunity for india where there was about 25 30% vacancy uh, sitting and we started approaching the landlords which were good Uh, sitting in let's say a grade a building a great micro market but were sitting on an empty property paying you know common area maintenance and a property tax so we started pitching to them and that model for us has been extremely successful out of the 120 150 centers 120 centers are in partnership with the landlord where essentially uh, out of that uh, 120 centers almost i would say 85% of those centers are in a profit share model 15% are revenue share model and in some cases is even almost 30% of those uh, total locations uh, do not even have a minimum guarantee right so we uh, you know clearly when we started uh, it it was an uphill battle uh, because you know you have to build a brand you have to build your credibility you have to deliver returns to your partner but today i can easily tell you that i mean at this scale i don't think this supply side story has been done anywhere in the globe I think we are probably one of the only ones that have been able to scale it up at this level. And today, I think uh, from a supply side story, we can pretty much walk into any city, and you know, any landlord uh, is willing to discuss. To your point, is the perception changed in the mind of uh, you know the property owners? Yes. So early days, everybody uh, was a bit skeptical. They thought, you know, what is going to happen to this industry? Will this sustain? Are they going to be able to you know raise capital to you know find their a feet in, uh, in in the sand here um but i think fast forward to 2020 at that stage when the larger occupiers started moving into co-working the large developers figured out that this is great right i mean we essentially um you know are getting a customer um which basically is giving me a lock in for 5 or 6 years and he's getting in turn getting a customer and he's taking the risk of those you know flexibility of coming in for lock in from the customer for 2 3 years so it's fantastic why wouldn't i work with with such uh, you know kind of operators so i think that business which was kind of bit on the sideline before that i think it became mainstream even from a developer standpoint our standpoint obviously out of the 120 centers a majority of that sits with you know hni as well family offices and mid tier developers in grade a plus properties but yes today we have large partnerships with prestige nucleus office park solitaire nayati etc which are grade a plus developers in multiple locations so almost 25 to 30% of our portfolio is also with large uh, developers who are multi location in india right right perfect and now that co-working has become a, an established industry uh, another vertical that we kind of wanted to shed light on was the managed office spaces vertical well, we we touched upon this a little bit but could you tell us um, what exactly managed office spaces are and how this is different from the regular co-working offering that office has yeah so i think at a very basic level um, they are similar but a managed office is a space where you offer a more customized and a comprehensive solution for a customer which behaves like almost their own space right right so the customer selects the space um customer 
works with the teams to design that space. And then the co-working operator basically takes on the lease, fits it out for them, and then manages it for them. Now, if a third party customer of, of that occupier comes, he would feel that this is their own office. They would not know any different, but the structuring at the back has given flexibility to the customer, taken the CapEx into an OpEx model, and obviously, you know, for companies which are a bit smaller, for large companies doing their own office or managed office is a question of speed and convenience. But for smaller hmm. companies, it is also a question of, you know, ability to deliver a great experience. And I think that's where um, a lot of companies which are taking on seats, sub, you know, let's say 500 seats, are looking at it as a solution where the operator is able to give their employees a much better experience uh, while making it appear as if it's their own own space. Right. And and this is probably just a very basic follow-up question. Just to, We're talking about the, the customized design of the spaces and the customized catering of the services. When it comes to actually selecting the space, uh, does it vary from client to client in terms of how, who decides where the space is, what the space is, and and how it works or uh, is it you know is it usually uh, segments or chunks are like maybe a few floors of uh, a certain designated space within an existing office structure that gets set, that gets set aside for that specific client so akshay akshay both uh, both uh, scenarios happen customers let's say who are taking more than 500 odd seats right typically that would translate to 40 50000 square foot mm -hmm. uh, of uh, rentable area mm -hmm. will want to select the space the building the micro market uh, they will want to be exposed to what's the base rental they would also want to get heavily involved in terms of design of the solution making sure that it follows their brand and marketing guidelines uh, you know and so on uh, and it feels and behaves like their own space right so that's one type of customer that wants a managed office usually the large occupiers and mncs and uh, you know lo local mncs are are the ones that are driving that type of managed office second uh, our typical centers are 5 to 600 seats and within that center also we would customize for let's say 100 200 300 seats right in that scenario obviously you know the ability to customize it exactly like their own becomes a bit limiting because i have already i have a structure right i'm already in a building i've already built a portion of that facility i will customize within the space that they select and make it behave like their own office right but in that process the selection of the building the selection of the floor etc becomes a bit limiting so there are two different type of uh, managed solutions uh, that that we focus on one where it's completely in hands of the customers to drive everything and second where they are limited with at least the location and the building and the micro market etc right right I mean, something that you had mentioned earlier, which which was very interesting, was the concept of, you know, uh, being a full stack uh, service provider. And you also touched upon, uh, you know, other verticals like uh, possibly design and build and even facilities management. So with that in mind, I wanted to ask you this. What exactly uh, does it mean for a company to become a, a full stack solutions provider? And for Office, what was the thought process behind uh, looking at becoming a full stack workspace solutions provider? Yeah, so uh, Yash, from our standpoint, when COVID hit, um, you know, I became paranoid. I was not sure if people or customers are going to come back, right? I mean, nobody was sure, right? I mean, we didn't know. Uh, it could be that everybody continued to always work from home. And that was, you know, the scenario, one of the scenarios that was being put out. So um, we uh, took a step back and said, well, um, offices or commercial offices or the requirement of space to do your work is not going to go away, right? It will come back in some format, be it co-working, be it conventional office taking off, be it people wanting satellite offices, work near home. So we said, well, if I have to cover our base, then we need to start thinking and behaving like a platform where the customer for whatever is their requirement could be, you know, taking on a seat, could be taking on a managed office, could be taking on maintenance of the office, could be just fitting out their office and, you know, uh, delivering that uh, turnkey solution for them. So we took a step back and said, well, we have to be that one-stop shop that delivers 
every single thing that a customer requires when it comes to commercial real estate. So we expanded from primarily at that stage a co-working business to adding on managed office solutions under our uh, office enterprise solution uh, brand. Then we expanded office care, which was a facility management business. And quite interestingly, at that stage, it was driven more from a need, right? Our partners, it was an outsourced model at that stage. And our partners decided not to play, pay, pay the blue collar workers. And my point was, if I'm going to protect my white collar workforce, then why would I not protect my blue collar workforce that delivers right. you know, exceptional, uh, customer service for my clients? So we insourced 700 people. Today, it's 2,500 people that are directly on our roles. Um, half of those manage our own centers and half of those are at third party locations, um, including integrated facility management to commercial offices, residential uh, campuses, hotels, uh, industrial uh, parks, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The third piece was we sell well, if, if people don't come into co-working, right, they will want at least their conventional office. It could look at a conventional office, maybe closer to their uh, employee base, etc. But they will want something. So we expanded that and we launched what we call as Office Transform, which basically is our design build solution. And then the final bet that we took, we said, well, if customers um, are going to work from home or work near home, they would require a meeting room once in a while. They would require a space where they can work from a day. Indian homes are not structured for people to sit all day and work from home, right? Right. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, places like Mumbai and Delhi, etc. Apartments are not very large, right? So we said, well, people will require something where they can go for a print or a given mailing address, etc., etc. So we launched Office Now, which is our on-demand solution. So you can book one hour of meeting room, you can one day of uh, a seat use, uh, you can buy bulk meeting room hours if you're a large corporation and distribute it across your sales and uh, sales teams, etc. So we launched all of these services. So the idea was very simple. Anything that you require from a commercial real estate standpoint, right? We have to be that one-stop shop. And today, uh, the new services that we launched is almost about 30% of our revenue. So it's become substantial wow. um, from, from our standpoint and continues to grow. Right. right. Um, I mean, just a short follow-up here. Um, you said that, uh, you know, now the kind of stack is kind of a bit well-rounded, but uh, I just wanted to ask you, are there any other verticals or services do you think that uh, you would be looking to add here or uh, is this workspace solution stack now complete in your eyes? So, um, one of the things that we have always uh, been grappling with um, is this whole idea of how do we go into tier three cities, right? I think uh, I've written and spoken about it extensively that we are now in 17 cities, nine metros and, you know, obviously eight uh, non-metros or tier two uh, cities. Um, and mm -hmm. we feel that for our size and scale that we want to operate at, right? Uh, uh, be it at a, a tier two city level where we need at least five or six centers over a certain period to be really, you know, viable as a business. The size of our centers typically, you know, 20, 25,000 square feet. Um, that in tier three cities is something that is not viable today, right? Because of the demand of the system being small. So we are exploring smaller formats and uh, we want to launch that piece uh, in the near future uh, so that we can service the tier three demand also. Early for me to comment on how we will structure that model, will it be similar to our supply story, story that we uh, do on managed aggregation? Or will it be a pure franchise model? Uh, but that's certainly that we are something we are looking at because you know, ultimately, it's like a McDonald's, right? I mean, <laughs> if you think about fast food, the first thing comes to mind is McDonald's, right? So we want to be that port of call where if you think about work, we should, AWFI should be the first port of call. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, moving on to something a little more broad spectrum over here. Uh, we we have heard of REITs very prominently as a buzzword thrown around in the real estate sector, uh, it, more so since 2016, 2017, and even and even even more in the news now in the last couple of years. Um, given that the current REITs in India are based on commercial office assets, do you feel that there's scope for financial products to be based out of or created out of co-working and managed office assets as well? Do you think that could be a potential trajectory for this industry? So, um, actually, at a very basic level, the premise in a REIT is that the asset 
is essentially being pooled together right right and everybody with their pooling or their value of the asset gets a percentage of that right. rate right now at a very fundamental level co-working i don't really own the asset it either i am in a leasing structure or i am in a in my case for example i am in more of a profit share structure um hmm. wherein the hardcore asset or the certainty of income from that asset is a bit more um uncertain right i'm not saying right. it not right. be done but it's a bit more uncertain now if you really right. look at the reit market in india there are only three reits that have been done till date right and it's been there for at least the last 5 6 years i think the regulations in india are fairly taking a very very calculated approach to who can do reit what can be a reit etc etc um i think that structuring or that control will continue at least for the next 3 4 years because the uh, the regulator is very careful because in any case real estate has had a bad rap in the in the past right with all the <laughs> right, right. things that have happened so they are being very careful yeah. how to do the reits right so i think next 3 4 years for a co-working or a managed office operator to be able to you know pool their assets and do a reit i think is fairly uh, low in my view okay um i think as the markets mature uh, clearly some of the structuring is already being done in the global markets right where you can anything that has a securitized income could get pooled together and then obviously investors can invest in it right it's been done right. um, but i think in india next 3 4 years uh, that concept of reit moving into co-working and managed office probably not going to happen because the regulators are taking a baby steps to ensure that there is full compliance there's no negative wrap around the whole whole process uh, but yeah in the future yeah absolutely it's something that that can be done because we are also guaranteeing income right my clients could be in a 12 24 right, right. six month uh, structure um yeah so but uh, absolutely it could happen in the future but i don't see it happening in the next 3 4 years right fair that that makes sense um and you know sticking with this uh, uh, sticking with the forward looking theme here something i wanted to ask you was you know the trends that you see playing out over the next few years in this market we spoke about uh, possibly tier 2 and tier 3 cities being the new you know avenue for expansion but now that things have stabilized and are maybe on a bit of an upswing what do you see uh, playing out in the flexible workspace market in india over the next say 5 years So yes it's very hard to predict 5 years right so <laughs> i would honestly tell you that i um at least when we do our business plans when we think about our you know uh, business and office and where it's going to go uh, we break it down uh, we have a kind of a 3 year strategy which is uh, out there uh, but we then break it down into 6 month windows so right. beyond 18 months i really can't predict you know with any kind of so <laughs> i don't know right i mean i if you ask me in you know january of 2020 where we were going i would have given you a very different answer right right so, right. so keeping keeping that premise in mind i think what i see at least for over the next 18 24 months is that flex is becoming uh, more and more mainstream and this will continue uh because of the uncertainties of recession uh war in ukraine supply chain issues etc uh people will still want to bring flexibility speed and not investing capex in non core uh, areas at the center of it i think this will continue so flex will continue to see a good horizon second i strongly believe that the india stack is very very um strong with manufacturing shifting from china here with you know services or it services even getting a, a you know a leg up when uh, people want to outsource etc i think india is going to be the center of attention for the world and if that happens and we are growing at 6 7% uh, of our gdp then clearly conventional real estate because the more economy goes more people come into work more you know growth happens and more space is required right so i think the india stack story will transfer into commercial a uh, conventional and flex all seeing record years in the next uh, you know i would say 18 to 24 months right third piece i think this hybrid model which is you know now you know come in for 2 3 days you can work from home work near home for the remaining etc i think it's here to stay at least for the next 24 months 
I think people have tasted the benefits of it. And India, the growth and infrastructure are always going to be in a mismatch. And great that, you know, in this budget, CapEx is that the core of it, but that spend of the CapEx is going to take five years. But if you look at a city like Bangalore, it's already a nightmare to do commute times there, right? I mean, right. it can take you four to five hours each, uh, I mean, uh, in a day for you to go back and forth. So people are going to f- be forced to take these kinds of bets, not because they want to work from home uh, all along or there is a, a moonlighting reason for for all of it, but just because people will say, my time is precious, so I think uh, I will not travel, right? And I'll not waste those four or five hours. So I think hybrid and distributed is uh, here to stay uh, at least for uh, for the for the foreseeable future. Right. And I firmly believe that, as, as I said, tier two and three, I think as India expands, people will have to go where the talent is, right? right. I was recently in a city uh, uh, called Nagpur, right? I had not gone there for a while. I recently went there. East to west, north to south, each portion of Nagpur is covered by a metro. One lakh ridership today, the infrastructure has the ability to take five lakh ridership without adding a single piece of infrastructure. Eight lane road, when you come out of the airport, good colleges, good weather, good infrastructure, good medical facilities. Why will that city not grow? Right. Similar with Indore, similar with Lucknow. Um, I think tier three, probably beyond 24, 36 months, I think will also see good amount of traction. But tier two story is very, very strong, at least for the next, uh, will will become strong over the next 18 to 24 months. Right. Um, perfect. Uh, Amit, with that, I think, um, you know, that, concludes the questions that we had for you today and from both Akshay and I I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking out the time and for giving us all these insights on the flexible workspace market I'm just going to jump in really quickly because I think maybe the listeners will have to uh, see the office logo to get a sense of the pun but thank you for some awesome insights and an awesome conversation <laughs> thank you Akshay and Yash and yes uh, I that's why in the middle of the conversation I clarified the spelling so that there was no confusion yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but thank you for doing this If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to follow Concrete Conversations on Instagram to know more about upcoming episodes and for some behind-the-scenes content. For more deep dives into the world of Indian real estate, stay tuned for more Concrete Conversations.